What's up, brother? It's your boy, Mike Muse. Welcome to the Conversation of Mike Muse Show. I am so excited to be in conversation with my next guest. Like, audience, I always talk to you about life has a funny way of coming full circle. And I've been having a lot of full circle moments on this show. Uh, and I am just so thankful for those full circle moments. But I've always had this idea about getting older. And the idea for me about getting older was about nervousness, didn't want to be old, wanted to stay young forever, wanted to stay in my 20s, wanted to do all the clubs every night, you know, and just be reckless and not have responsibilities. And I always thought getting older, I was going to be boring, life will be over. But as I gotten older, it's, it's only beginning and it's getting so much fun. But the beauty of it is that you get to do the, you have the chance to do really dope and incredible things with dope and incredible people who actually become your friends. I actually met my next guest at, when he was at business school, um, at the Wharton School of Business. And I came down and, and did a talk. They were so gracious. Um, him and his uh, co fellow cohort, who is my family, uh, Brian Lattimore, they invited me down uh, to do a talk. And uh, I've seen him in his MBA program. And since then, I seeing this brother do incredible things from starting his own spirits company all the way to being on commercials for American Express uh, to now managing a portfolio uh, focused on um, Black spirit founders and really finding ways to advocate them. And you know, audience, this is all that I advocate for. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I want to introduce you to uh, the managing director and CEO of Park Horns. What's happening to Mario Pinker? My man, Mike Muse, what is good, my friend? It's been a minute, but it's so good to see you again. I'm so happy for all the success. I see you pop up every day on my screens. Yeah. My man, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. It's, 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 e e it's great to come full circle and, uh, and join you as a guest on your show today. Equally, man, and I'm just so proud of you. You look great. That intro was so authentic. And I just love I'm able to see my friends do incredible things. So, Mario, I'm often asked about the art of the pivot. And I wouldn't necessarily say you had an art the pivot going from your MBA into the liquor industry and the spirits industry, but you entered it in a time when it wasn't all the rage. It wasn't all the buzzwords, right? And so how did you know, were you able to read the trend that this is what you wanted to go into? Because people come from Wharton or other top five B schools. Let's say top 10 to why you, you know, you Normally know, they, what, yeah, yeah, they, number they one, but I understand where you're going. Let's say I'm trying to be politically correct. You know absolutely. I mean? like, absolutely. I top five. I got you. All the top 10 think everybody will include it. Mm -hmm. um, they, they typically tend to go into Wall Street, into investment banking, into private equity. Uh, maybe they go with a consulting route with Bain or Boston or, or McKinsey, right? But you decided to do this venture. What was that? And were you an outlier in your class? Oh, to, to, to answer in reverse order, 100% an outlier, right? Everyone was going into consulting, investment banking. And to your point, like there's nothing wrong with those careers. They were amazing careers. And I'm sure people had great times and learned a ton. Um, but for me at that point, I kind of went to business school a little bit older. And so I already had some of that experience and was looking for more alignment with my values themselves. And so, you know, I, I'm very familiar to, to, to your family. Um, you know, we our, our love languages center around food and beverage. Right. So food and beverage center around sharing your voice and sharing your narrative and controlling that narrative and kind of creating your own way are like some of the things that were taught to me as a child. And they never really left who I was. And so to your point about like when I went on these journeys, there were always been about kind of self-awareness and like self-alignment on who I was and what that meant, and how I showed up in the world. And so yeah. food and beverage being a love language for me um, always centered me around other people. Right. You talked about being out and the nightlife and being out on the social occasions. And that was part of that like ethos was there were people involved in that place. My home back in the days when I was a kid was the safe haven that everyone can come to over food and beverage and have real talk, right? And have vulnerable conversations with mom and dad and talk about the world. And so like that never left. Yes, it turned into parties, it turned into barbecues, it turned into all kinds of things. But at the epicenter was food and beverage and the love language of like being able to communicate and share stories, right? And I so for me, that never changed. But you were, were, I want to go there, but then I want to go back in terms of being able to pivot out of that, because I think there's a there there. And, and maybe to catch that question and tie it into this next area where I want to go, because you brought up something interesting, really centering around family. Spirits now in, in the liquor business. Uh, so audience, I'm going to say spirits, right, just for, for conversation purposes. So for the spirits industry now, it it's acceptable that everyone is doing it. Everyone's drinking. It, it's, it's a very common kind of thing. 
But often sometimes in the black community and black culture, because it's so rooted in church, right? There was always like this connotation Tension. of drinking, right? There's mm -hmm. always this shamefulness in certain areas. There's always, I'm a hide in a corner and drink, right? Or like, I'm never going to tell my family that I drink, right? And what's the church going to say? And don't mm -hmm. be drunken in the spirit. And, you know, best of the devil's water. You know, all the things, you know. That don't be a bruiser. Mm -hmm. It was like, how did you reconcile, you know, the social construct of religion and whether or not you're religious or not, like every mm -hmm. black family or individual has to have a touch point of religion at some point, whether you have a praying grandmother or not. Um, how did you reconcile that with saying, you know what, I want to actually injure the spirits industry? It's a great question. And to your point, yeah, I had a, 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 a church going great grandmother that went every day, right? And a choir singing grandmother who still sings at the church. And so in a lot of ways, the the one of the other values that was bestowed upon me back in the day was also this idea of having choice, right? The idea that you have choice is actually a privilege. You know, when you think about a lot of our forefathers and mothers, they were solving for chance when they came from wherever they came from. If they had that that uh, the ability to transverse the South to Michigan, like yourself, right? It was all about this idea of chance. My parents said to me, "Listen." You, you do not wear our burden. The world will give you that, don't worry, in spades. But you have choice. And so using that lens allowed me to like walk a different, to your point, a, a slight pivot and rationalization of this idea that actually I can navigate many, many spaces fluidly um, without kind of uh, being scared of an impact or a, a perception um, rooted in, in, old, in, old, you know, in older ways, right? And so choice became not only epicenter for like how I've defined my career trajectory and path, you called it a pivot, but I always had the lens like, I get the, my footprints, what are we talking about here? But also the idea that I get to create a uh, bitters company circa 2011, 2012 with great friends, Eddie and Tobin around this idea of, oh, we're not the hero, but we can be the sidekick and that's cool too. And we can like power that with choice because you want to drink along a continuum. So you get to participate in not only the cool cocktail enthusiast, death and company experience, but you get to go to the dive bar and do the same thing because you have choice alone in continuum. And so you can't like pigeonhole me for my individualism or what I'm drinking, right? Or how I'm drinking. And so I think this narrative for me is a through line that takes me to pronghorn today, which is about solving for choice again, along the kind of underrepresented spectrum, right? So for me, the, the lens is that has always been the same. It's just what part of the journey are we on now that we're providing more access points to others who are looking for the same kind of, um, you know, change, right? Or the same access to this choice that in so many cases we're on, we often don't have a chance to um, be involved in, right? And so when you said earlier today, this idea about inclusion, well, that's only going to be relevant and real if people have that choice. And so that's how I reconcile kind of that piece. Well, audience, as you know, I am just here to moderate discourse. Uh, it's rare that I'm even leading a, a conversation. So, Jamar, you just entered the space now where you are officially a co-host because you have guided me into the point where I'm now stuck on choice. I cannot not think about that anymore because choice really symbolizes freedom, right? And so for a Black person uh, to say and to recognize at a very early age that their constitution is rooted in choice, um, that is a revolutionary act unto itself because it gives you the freedom to explore and to do, you know, as you want. As we look at Pronghorn, we look at the portfolio of companies that you guys have. I want to give, I want you to characterize like just the industry uh, of spirits and relationship to choice. Because often I feel that, you know, due to marketing um, and advertising, I think it's all segmented by race demographics. And I often believe for choice, we're not presented other alternative spirits such as beer right if we get a beer it's only one type of beer right like we don't really get the full spectrum of portfolios and different types of beer that is there so we're not even being marketed and advertised to as a potential to even maybe could even enjoy that right when we look at uh champagne i'm a big lover of, of champagnes we're only presented a really particular type of champagne, but there mm -hmm. is such a plethora of a wide ranging portfolios of champagnes that exist that are even better in terms of taste wise, but were never presented any of those opportunities. So I just want you, if you could elaborate on how the marketing of, in the spirits industry eliminates black individuals from having choice mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. end up to expanding our palate to be open to other things. I mean, it's a great, it's a great question um, and, and, and thought, right? 
this idea is, is really centered around the idea of access or inaccess, right? To your point about your ability to be marketed to or to be represented in the actual spirits or the beer, wine, champagne is actually a byproduct of not being reflected in the community that's doing the work, right? And so if I take a, a step back just to kind of like paint the full picture, you know, 12, 13% of consumption pro rata black population um, with, with, with kind of the, the BevAlk industry. Um, but the representation at the executive level, 2%, the, the participation at the labor force level in terms of people who work in the supply chain, the, su the supplier level, the distributors, um, 7%, 8%, right? So just the actual representation in the industry is gonna therefore bear certain fruit, right? And so what Pronghorn is here to do is kind of like reconcile um, not only the founder journey and the entrepreneur journey, but also the talent journey inside the industry. And so this idea of pronghorn is two pronged, right? Um, uh, just to take a, another step back, the pronghorn itself is the second fastest land animal in the world, only second to the cheetah. Um, and so in a sprint, the cheetah would win every time, but in a marathon, the pronghorn would win 100% of the time. Why? Because they can traverse many, 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 many hundreds of miles at a time through vision, speed, and endurance. And so the pronghorn kind of exemplifies this idea that we are reconciling the industry with vision, speed, and endurance over a long horizon by investing in founders and brands and investing in talent to bring into this system, right? And so I that, love that. that to the love point that. answers your question about like, when that starts to have a little bit more balance, I think you'll really start to see different types of things come towards your way, right? And that's kind of what we're doing here with some of the brands behind me that we're talking to, you know, investing in to, to, to kind of like paint that picture, right? And provide that access um, where it makes sense. That there's more varietals that are out mm -hmm. there that have different tastes that are, are very expansive and hit the notes really differently from more the sweeter side to more the drier side to the brute side. I particularly love like a white imperial moet in the summertime with ice and a mint and a lime, right? And kind of make it very refreshing. And so there, there is that. When I'm looking at the pronghorn portfolio um, that you guys have, I, I find something really interesting just doing a, a brief overview. You guys have rums, you guys have tequilas. You guys have bourbons, you guys, you guys have some whiskeys. What's interesting is I see that you only have, well, as far as some of the highlights that I'm seeing, I'm mm -hmm, seeing a really mm -hmm. good blend of different types, right? How important was it for you guys to have a varietal of different types of spirits in your portfolio? Because generally if I have seen, you know, black individuals who are interested in opening up a spirit brand, they kind of just automatically default to vodka for a time. Mm. There was a time mm. period where mm. vodka mm. was the most one. So what was it about the intentionality of how you pick your, the type of spirits you want to have for your portfolio? So I guess what is like the thesis of your portfolio? Because That's every VC question. and founders have different, you know, interests. Well, some is just healthcare, you know, some is FinTech, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm just curious, what is your thesis? It's a, and what it's, it's a great question. The thesis is, 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 is actually centered first and foremost about this idea that founders are over mentored and underfunded, like central thesis, right? And more about, um, less about the categorization today, that'll get there, but that's not, the, that's not the, the, the core of the thesis. The core of the thesis is really, again, to not only capitalize, but then over index on mentoring, on incubating, on accelerating the brands past where they can do alone at this stage because they're very early stage. So the thesis around early stage investors, sorry, early stage founders who have an amazing story that they want to tell and then a, a ridiculous amount of passion for telling that story, right? Because we know that because we're not usually have access to friends and family or seed A capital, it's really tough to, 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 to power a lot of the traditional markers you see in the world that indicate this brand's alive, right? So the thesis is not really around categorization representation to start, it's really about storytelling and that intersectionality of the black excellence story, right? Because it's untold moments that were like, to the point we made earlier around migrating, right? There is an amazing brand called Delta Dirt from Arkansas. Um, the, the, the family's grandfather brought the, the, brought the land back in sharecropping, right? They've harvested corn and vegetables and sweet potatoes for years and years and years. The father comes back home and says, I want to harvest the sweet potatoes to make sweet potato vodka, right? So story, the, del the, the, the delta dirt, the dirt is so rich, 
right? And so could you imagine, again, not a huge brand today, but hopefully, and God willing, it will be. But the idea that this story is so empower, and empowering powers a lot of, of, of where he is in Arkansas, right? It's powering the community. It's providing jobs. It's providing a, a narrative that we don't get to see. So these are the kind of stories that are more important to the thesis today, which will bear arms, bear, bear fruit later, right? And so I want to make sure that we are trying to be um, commercially responsible um, and successful for the brand, but also have this idea of storytelling and mission um, that's at the core of Pronghorn. I want to advance that, but I do want to stick with the, the Delta Dirt because I did. I love what you think about the storytelling because you think about the idea of Black farmers and what Black farmers used to have back in the time period, right? That got stripped away. There's so many acres that have been stripped away from Black farmers and this movement now to save and protect Black farmers and the importance of Black farming. But more so the idea that this is a sweet potato vodka, I am dying to try that. So Jamari, please <laughs> Bottle coming your way. Because I do coming love your way. Now, uh, wait, that's there. <laughs> Say less because I actually do, audience, do love a potato based vodka. Um, and so my favorite potato based vodka is Chopin. Um, mm. And I think that makes such a really great martini. Um, and in really particular, a Vesper martini. There's something about the mix of a Hendrix and a Chopin with the Vesper. Is this a that chef's it kiss? <laughs> uh, this is, it's a chef kiss martini. And so now, though, I do want to just kind of pivot down in terms of like, yes, the storytelling in terms of how Pronghorn looks at the types of founders they want to invest in, right? That part I do get. But is there any thought process in terms of the category of types of spirits um, that you guys are looking for? And I'm only saying that for individuals who are listening who may ultimately be Absolutely. interested in pitching you and, and really being figuring out how to be part of the cohort and, and the incubator system. Absolutely. I mean, we are we are looking from from everything. I mean, what's the sweet spot, obviously, right now in the industry is is, is whiskey and tequila, but rum is having its heyday, and I think they're, they're right around the horizon, right? But with that said, we're looking at, you know, sorrels and all, all the cores and non-alks, right? So, so we want to make sure that while we're focused on the spirits category, for now, not wine, not beer, not champagne, but 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 spirits. It's everything. Why? Because there are untold tapped markets and stories that haven't been told. If you think about, you know, Sorrel, for example, there's a huge market there of, of indigenous, you know, folks who who enjoy that spirit type, but don't are not represented on the shelf. Right. And yeah. so there are market opportunities that are sitting there for the taking or for the exposure, or for the marketing or for the storytelling. Um, and so we don't want to be limited to a certain category for the viewers out there. We want to welcome other stories that aren't told because that happens all the time. Think about Kachasa, right? There are places that like we've been that we know that there are indigenous, there are black Americans, there are black people there. Um, and, and we wanna make sure they are welcome to the table to talk about their stories because those are to the thesis, to the point about the thesis, the reason it's not so poignant as a, a, a traditional VC is because we're trying to, over, we're trying to be, be very, very mindful that the old theses of yesterday don't work for our space, that. for our community. So let's bend that narrative. Let's change that space and, and bring to fruition, you know, those, those untold spirits, those untold entrepreneurs and those untold stories. So for those people who have those untold spirits and those untold stories, untold entrepreneurs, those individuals who can make a mean cocktail in their basement, right? They can make a mean thing that they bring to the family union or to the function. We love the word function, right? <laughs> to the function that they have. How, like, once they email you and they start engaging in conversations with Pronghorn, how does, you, how does Pronghorn operate? Like, what are the things that you do for founders mm -hmm. um, that's in your portfolio? Because I find this fascinating because we don't hear often about VCs that invest specifically into the Spirits brand. And so we traditionally know if I'm a fintech startup, I typically know if I'm going to go to like a certain VC. Like what Combinator I can expect or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of know what to expect. I'm going to do a pitch. I'm going to get some money. There's going to be some equity play. And then I get invited to the portfolio and then they do X, Y, and Z for me. So talk to us about the process. If I have that, some things I'm just making and cooking in the kitchen, Absolutely. I want to expand and grow. Uh, when they tap into you, what do you guys offer? Um, Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, a few things. One is that our, our, our kind of um, our success is built on this idea that we're going to invest in 57 black owned spirit companies over the next 10 years. Simultaneously, we're going to help 1800 individuals um, retain employment within the industry. With that said, our process is different on t in, in, in many ways. Our process for evaluating um, kind of 
brands, if you will, can actually start the concept phase. It doesn't need to be a fully baked brand that has in a market, but that'd be nice if that is, and that, and, and you're able to, 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 to do that hard work already, fantastic. But we try to do, is, which is different than I'd say most investment uh, vehicles, is we're actually taking you on a journey of not only before investing, of getting to know you, but vice versa. This is a partnership, this is a relationship. We wanna make sure that you not only understand your brand story, but you understand the actual industry at large. So our process takes many, you know, a, a decent amount of, of time, um, but it's, it's rooted in this idea of education along the journey. So that you have your own bespoke process to how that happens. What that means, and if I double click, is our first call is all about you telling us our story. Our second call is all of us, is about all of us telling you our story, just so we understand if we like each other, if we wanna work together. Because to your point, we just don't invest and walk away. Once we make that investment after a long kind of relationship building bond, then we kind of sit side by side with you and help you think about your own playbook. It's great to have mentors that are like, you know, helping you go in this direction, that direction, but we actually get in the shotgun seat of your car and say like, show us the playbook. Does it make sense? Here's what you should think about supply chain. Maybe here's what you should think about route to market. Where is locales to you? How are you marketing? Do you have enough money to do that? If so, here's how you should think about it, right? And so we're not, we're not, um, we're not, telling you what to do by any stage or any means, but we're definitely giving you recommendations based on the hundred, over a hundred of years of experience that the team has here at Pronghorn, right? And so we're trying to take a very, very bespoke approach to each brand. And to your point earlier about like categorization, every brand, every price point, every founder, every market opportunity is slightly different. And so we don't want to make any, you know, any claims about doing something copy paste. It doesn't make sense, right? So we know if access is your challenge, it's going to be access to capital, but it's going to be access to know-how that we want to unlock for you, right? And so Pronghorn is very, very uh, big on unlocking value in many, many ways. The same goes for what we call the bridge code, the talent building side. We don't want to just say, here's a job posting. We want to say, not only is a job posting, here's a certification program that we're building to help you get ready to enter the actual industry itself. Not only that, we'll pair you up with recruiters that are looking for talent, but you may not know that they're there before you even get to that stage. So we're doing cultural mixers um, with kind of like, you know, HR teams of different organizations. Uh, we're doing all kinds of things to kind of navigate um, kind of both, let's call them entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs along both of their journeys. What stage are you looking to invest? And let's not, I don't want to do the, uh, the founder speak because the audience may not be aware of that, right? And so are you looking at people who just have the idea on paper phase? Are you looking at the phase where people have make some really good, like some type of concoction in their kitchen and just at their family reunions? Are you looking for people who already have samples and bottles and may have like their liquor or spirits in one store? Or are you looking at they already have like a small already distribution that they have? Like at who are you looking for? That's a great question. And to, to, to your point, to like take it out of spirit speak, all of the above. Right. So if you had a concept that was amazing and you thought through who the consumer was and where you were located and the idea and what the liquid was and you had it in your kitchen, but it was ready to go and you kind of had some line of sight of like why you're here to do this. Great concept brand for those who are speaking uh, venture or investor. Right. Um, fantastic. If you're in a, if you're in 10 states and you have market traction and you love what you're doing and you have two employees or four employees and you're working it out. Fantastic as well. And so, again. This is about unlocking the access point wherever you are it. in your journey, right? And we're investing different amounts, different depending on where you are in that stage. But that does not um, stop anyone from jump joining the table. We are building the proverbial table, right? And so Audience, come to the table, really whether or not you're a consumer, whether or not you're an entrepreneur, whether or not you are looking for a job, we want to be the glue from the Black community to the spirits industry, full stop. I just want to undermine what Jamari is talking about to kind of go into investor speak now and venture speak about unlocking the access. It is rare. Uh, unlocking the access point for founders. It is rare. You have VCs and funds that are really, that have such intentionality about who they want to unlock access to, who they want to give it to and how they want to support. I cannot stress enough uh, his use of the word unlocking access and wherever your access point is needed, that's where we come in. And that is rare. Um, that is a rare thesis uh, within the investor community. So I just want to point that out. And Jamari and to Bronghar, I just wanted to salute you guys for doing that because 
if only we had more VCs and funders who really understood that, um, who are, I believe both can be true. I believe you can have intentionality and be willing to unlock access and you can still make money, right? Like one doesn't exactly. have to compromise for the other. As we wrap, I can talk to you all day. This means you have to come back on, on the Mike New Show and I have to get to that bar. Uh, that's for, for that sure. Absolutely. Is, I always talk about, you unlock something in me, speaking of unlocking, you unlock something in me in the beginning of the conversation where you were talking about love language being food and spirits. I've always looked at, I've always talked to chefs, mm. um, in particular by people who can cook really good. I'm just like, you know, the reason why other cultures and entities sometimes have a tendency to take what is known as food that are traditionally considered to be a soul food or traditionally to be from the South, right? Or, or, or black people's food, take it, monetize it, sell it, mass market, right? And, they, and it becomes a huge commercial um, success. And I often, I talked to this black chef one time, I was like, why do you think we just don't, you know, get involved as our opening restaurants, you know, become chefs or try and monetize our food in some capacity? He said, because we always look at food as an act of love right like mm. when you go to grandma's house or other people's houses you know the money may not be there you know to take 10 people out to a birthday dinner so instead what your loved one of will course. do is get up at 4 a.m and make that pound cake from down. scratch right mm -hmm. and, and the whole night and work so hard so that you, you you appreciate and you feel the love of that and so i've always looked at the ways that we have to start looking from food from a moment of love and see it as love and right love and that can be monetized so but it's almost just a mental shift you use the word love for spirit i never thought about that in our final conversation statement i want you to end on is mm -hmm. how should we in the black community be looking at spirits from a place of grabbing a drink with your friend into turning that idea of your friend into monetization mm, that's a great question um wow well i think <clears throat> This idea for me, it's really centered around the space that's created to your point when you're having it with your friend. It's a space that's, for lack of better terminology, it's a vulnerable space, right? You're kind of like breaking bread. That means you're like broke down a barrier. Um, so it's about vulnerability. Then it's about having deliberate disagreement or debate or conversation, um, which leans into this idea of trust, right? Which you, once you like, have a little battle and a tussle, you start to trust that spat process and that loop of vulnerability with that friend. The conversation to your point needs to go from this idea of, of what that chef said is they don't necessarily trust the commercial idea, right? It feels like it becomes disingenuous once you put it into that space. So I think that really the idea of trusting it to be commercially successful, this idea from taking a vulnerable moment and vulnerable space into having a little bit of conflict with it and understanding and unpacking that wait a second, if I access this in a different way and build trust with the community around me, they'll feel it too, right? They'll come back to grandma's house with that sweet potato pie as well because you've built in the trust loop, not just mm. the beginning part of it. So I'll leave you with that as my as my. I point. love that. Jamari, I'm assuming people, well, that was a beautiful way to end, brother. Listen, pronghorn.co is where you can find us, P-R-O-N-G-H-O-R-N uh, .co. But if you want to find it in a brand today, Go to reservebar.com. If you're in New York, Happy Cork. There's a ton of places where you can find Black-owned spirits. Please come to our website. Please shop the portfolio. If you're looking for a job in the space, come to the pronghorn.co. There's a job board up there right now. We have an entire team dedicated to helping you find employment in the space from HBCUs all the way through to Executive Suite. So please and, is lock that how with I find us. the funding too? Is that how I That is how you find the funding, funding as well. Okay, Absolutely. Perfect. Jamari, stay right Our there. Our team awaits. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Stay right there. Audience, uh, I mean, get to drinking and get to monetization. Um, if you don't have an interest in having your own spirit, but you're listening to the show and you have a friend um, that does, make sure you let the note on for it and how to tap into it. Uh, until next time, folks. Peace.